All right, we're doing something a little different today. I'm going crabbing with my boy Robbie here. He's got his deckhands, Ethan and Dalton, and these guys are making money. They're letting me tag along. Now, if you've ever had fresh blue crabs, you know it's a pretty delicious product. But we're gonna get to see today a lot of the work that goes into getting these crabs and shipping them all around the country. So I'm excited. Thank y'all for having me. No problem. Bro. I'm gonna just kind of stay out the way and let these guys do their work. All right, let's go see. This is like our morning routine. So we, we, load, we load an ice in the box to use for our slush tank to slush our crabs. We're uh, loading bait. Obviously the bait the bait box is back for the crabs. We're gonna load a couple traps that we pressure wash. This is what we do every morning. This is a, work starts as soon as you wake up. You know? well, about what time y'all get here? Uh, 4.45, 5 o'clock is when we start in the morning. So we're in Shell Beach, Louisiana this morning, which is about 40 minutes from downtown New Orleans. We're just gonna be fishing the interior waters here. We're not going out too far. And I'm telling you, these blue crabs, they're a delicacy. So I'm really interested to see how a commercial operation does it. You know, we do it kind of for fun, putting out little traps here and there, but it's cool to see how much goes into it to do this for a living. The first trap came up, had a few crabs in it, a really nice one. Uh, what they're doing here is they're going to get them out the trap, dump them into the ice, then they're going to sort them. They sort them based on size. So you've got number ones being your biggest and best, number twos being kind of your medium, and factory crabs, which are kind of smaller, and then there's also going to be a box for females. Now your immature females are going to be put back, the ones that are mature enough they're going to keep and they get to be their own little assortment. Each time the trap comes up, you got to rebait it, put it back out. What is that one? This is it number one right here? It's a big fat crab, a lot of meat on it man. And that's a male? Yep, that's a male right there. The ones who got the, the straight line, and oh, the straight back, that's the male and the female's got the fat on. I don't want to all right, so we switching gears here. We're picking up traps back where we started, but the tide was really low. It makes doing that kind of work a lot harder, so he decided let's just go do something different. We're gonna take the traps that they have loaded on here, bait those and put those out while waiting for the tide to come back up. Then we'll go back and pick up the ones that we had started with. So right now we're just baiting traps and putting them out. So how do you pick a new spot like this? What do you look for? Well, I picked traps up out of here the other day and uh, to wash, because they got dirty. Basically, it's just like in your mind, you know, I got something I want to try, I'm going to do it. Uh, if they don't do nothing, I put a mag on a boat and we'll move them to another place, you know? So want to try different things, we're going to try it and we're going to see how it does, you know? But I had traps in there before and I think they did good. Okay, so this is a spot you fished before. Throw it, yeah. A spot I had traps in. We were getting a couple ones every trap, so I'm gonna try it again and see how it does, and then we'll make adjustments based on based on what it does this time. I'm trying to give them like two runs, so we'll run them once, and then we'll run them again. If it doesn't do nothing by that time, we'll pick them up and move them and get it to another place. Cause you gotta stay on the crabs. So fishing for crabs is like fishing for anything else. You can't just pick a random spot and expect to catch crabs. Now it might have them there, but it might not. You know they move around just like everything else, and you're gonna find little hot spots. Now, the benefit that Robbie has is that he's grew up down here, so he knows he's got a little catalog of spots that he can go to. But he's also trying new spots 
over the years to figure out, okay, well, maybe they're here. And if you can hit on a good spot, you can make a lot of money. So it's just like any other type of fishing. You got to keep trying different spots. So a lot of times you have to use whatever's available at the bait house. I know they like to use pogies a lot for this type of fishing, which is a uh, menhaden. But when they went to get bait today, they didn't have as much bogies as they would like. They're using herring as well. So you can tell he's adding a bunch of herring and a bogey. And already you can see there's a lot of hustle involved with this. When it's going down, you gotta be moving fast. You gotta get these traps out. Dalton's back there grabbing them off. Ethan's getting them ready, putting them out, baiting them. Bobby's driving, there's a lot goes on on this boat. And you gotta figure these guys are doing this every day, getting up early. This is a grind, it's a hustle, but it's a good way to make a living. Right now, we're fishing shallow water because that's where the, the bigger ones are. Once it gets hot enough, they start getting out that warm water to get in a little cooler water to fish the bayous and the lakes. And then we'll start moving to the outside to fish females in the winter. So, in the winter time, throw it. I don't even know where I'm at. Let's we'll we'll start fishing the females. That's a, that's a grind every day. We get up at 2.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and we got an hour and a half run out traps wow. every day. It's a long ride. So. But it, it, it's just transitioning the whole time. But we're constantly on the move, you know? I mean, it's not like you're staying in one spot all day long. I got two sets, but we fish half and half. So today we'll run half the traps, tomorrow we'll come back and run the other half. And then the next day we start it all over again and we'll run the half that we ran Monday, we run again on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on the day. I spend some time with my kids on the weekends. Every other weekend I'll run Monday through Saturday. This weekend here I run Monday through Friday. Once these crabs come out of the trap, they go directly into the ice bath. You do not want to get pinched by a blue crab. They have those claws up front. They're surprisingly strong. If it gets a hold of you, you will bleed, and it's not a fun experience. So the ice bath kind of just chills them out. They come up out the crab, get dumped into the ice bath, and that's like your signal, like, hey, dude, you better chill out, sit in this ice bath. Then he's able to go in there, grab them, and put them in the box they need to be in. What you got there? It's a number one crab right here. It's a bigger crab. More pricier. Good meat though. All right, so we just filled up the first crate of number ones. Remember, number ones are the most valuable crab. Ball parking at that crate right there is worth about 250 bucks. That sounds good, that sounds like a lot. But you have to consider expenses. And that's what he was saying earlier. People focus on the money coming in, they don't think about what's going out. He had to fuel the boat, get ice, get bait. You gotta just consider some of those things too. What are y'all looking at price-wise on crabs these days? Ones we're getting 475, twos 275, the females are 225, and the factory we get nine, the factory crabs we get 90 cents a pound. So while we're chasing ones, you're getting a good price for them. That's the only thing that's really saving us in the industry is because the price is so good right now. When if the price wasn't good, it'd be hard to make a day's work. Here's our number twos. A pretty decent sized crabs, got a little bit of meat on them, you get a decent price on them. And we're starting to add up here too. This is the factory box here, just not quite big enough to make it to the one or two boxes. But there's still a market for it. You just won't get a great price on these. Thank you. 
All right, y'all, I'm here at Hook and Line in Chalmette, and this is a full service sporting goods store. They've got everything you need for hunting and fishing when you come down to St. Bernard. They've got everything you need for crabbing, which is why I'm here, and really just a fun place to come. It's locally owned and a good place to go when you come visit St. Bernard. All right, y'all, what y'all think? Huh? Huh? New hunting hat, little mallard, some flames. I like it. I like it. Any of this stuff works on our local speckled trout redfish. We got a large bass population. All this will work. I mean, if you're like me and you just want to fish with a cane pole, good enough to go right here. All your old school corks that you need. You know, we like to fish with a popping cork down here. Minnow traps. Catch your own bait. Catch some crawfish off the side of the road. Oh, wait. Is that what we need? Yep. There it is. Crab nets. Right here. This is what I need. That's exactly what I need right there. All right, y'all, I got Brandon here from Hook and Lime. Tell them why they need to come see y'all when they come to St. Bernard. We got the only gunsmith in the parish. We got the best prices in the area. I got handmade crab nets here for Jared. If you need it, we got it. All right, y'all, so our goal with this series we're doing about coming down to St. Bernard Parish, we're showing you where to go, we're showing you what to use, and we're showing you where to stop to get what you need. So come see Hook and Line when you come down to St. Bernard Parish. You're going down to the bayous, you're going to pass this every time. So come see them at Hook and Line in Chalmette. I'll have all the information you need for them in the description below. All right, y'all, it is an absolutely beautiful day down here in St. Bernard Parish. I'm at the Delacroix Island Public Fishing Pier, and we got those crab nets that I picked up at Hook and Line. This bayou right here is Bayou Terra Buff. It's a good brackish water bayou, definitely holds a lot of blue crabs and all types of shrimp, fish, anything you could think of. So let's go get everything set up and start fishing. Bayou Terra Buff in St. Bernard Parish is a former distributary of the Mississippi River. It got its name, which means the land of oxen, in the 1700s when feral cattle were seen roaming its ridges. People from the Canary Islands settled along Bayou Terra Buff in the 1700s and 1800s. They made their way by fishing and hunting in and around the fertile waters of Bayou Terra Buff. Today, coastal erosion and hurricanes have put a hurting on Bayou Terra Buff, but it still provides for the people who depend on it. Wait, we got Big Frank with us today. That's Frank Williams from B-Side. Go check him out. What we got, Frank? What we got? So, I like to get turkey necks, but um, Walmart don't ever carry turkey necks, so I bought chicken drumsticks. And oh, man. We should have brought the barbecue for that, man. <laughs> I got all my old fish heads I've been saving. I like to save fish heads. But if you do come down to St. Bernard, we got lots of grocery stores. You can stop and get chicken to catch your crabs once you get your crab nets from hook and line. Let's go get started. All right, so we got about 12 of these nets total. Like I said, we're fishing this brackish water here. I save all of my fish scraps when I clean fish. So, save the whole head, the whole body. I, you know, I either use it for crab bait, crawfish bait, who knows, you know, minnow traps, whatever. I almost, I rarely throw this type of stuff away. And look, the way I clean it, you get a nice spot to run your string through. Good place to tie off at. There it is. Set that one out right here by this piling. And like I said, you got this railing all around. Loop it around there so you don't lose it. There we go. About as easy as it gets. You pick up some chicken, some nets, and just that simple you could be catching crabs. There she goes. Go get us some crabs. Should be pretty shallow. Yeah. Until we get, you know, maybe once we get over there, it'll deepen up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try to get these knocked out. And then we'll just keep checking them. Beautiful day. We should have brought a barbecue for that chicken though. And I'm just gonna kind of come up slow. The crabs will typically hold oh, on to the, oh man. They'll hold on to the bait just like that. Oh, and we'll let that little guy go. Put that little guy back, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, that other one looks like a keeper, though. And this is where you get pinched. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Um, 
Okay. So in Louisiana, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no minimum size for a recreational crab, huh? And for people that don't know, well, that's a, that's a male. That's a male. So, so a female will actually have more of a wider, and a young female will actually have almost a perfect pyramid to where an older female will be more rounded. So we that's catch plenty one. good enough. Yeah. All right, we got the day started. All right, so net number two is just short ways from that one. Let's see if it makes a difference on them being close to each other or not. I mean, you're talking that's only about eight to 10 foot away. So let's see if maybe we need to spread them out a little bit more. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, see, it must be the little ones can get, I don't know why, why they keep getting out. I think the weapon's big like that. All right. All right. Yep, yep. They're all male crabs. All males, huh? Believe it or not, that's some of the best crabbing I've seen. Most of the time you pull it up, you got one, maybe two. <laughs> and this is like three, four. Yeah, know? I think this cold front is helping us out, man. I really do. All right, let's see. So we haven't been skunked yet, but we are losing them. So I'm actually coming up faster. We've been losing the last few. Oh, he was on the bottom. That's where it was. That's a nice crab right yeah. there, bro. Oh, there you go. Just shake it and see if we can shake them off into the basket and then we'll sort them later. There we go. That's the way to do it, Frank. Yeah. yeah, that last crab was actually on the bottom. He was holding to the bottom of the net. So our number one crab is our biggest size and that's definitely a number one. Definitely a number one. Nice. All right, y'all. So far, we're catching good. I, I think this cold front, all this water movement is really helping push crabs through here. Every net so far has had at least two or three. So let's keep checking. Once again, we're at the Delacro Public Fishing Pier. It's here on Delacro Highway in St. Bernard Parish. Come visit us here in St. Bernard. Get you some crabs. Get you some fishing in. Enjoy this culture we have. It's not hard to do. We showed you where to get the nets. Oh, chicken. Chicken and little ones, just throw it back. Yep, throw a whole net back. All right. See, I got my long hook. You may want to bring something like that when you come. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. <laughs> I didn't actually tie, I just kind of looped. No. Nothing. All right, so now we're about to go check some more shallow nets. I expect it to be a little bit better than the last few. It's definitely the shallow ones, buddy. We gotta run them shallow. Yep. Shallow ones are doing better. Shake, shake that net. He's gonna be difficult, isn't he? He's wrapped up in the... Yeah. All right, let me go get your grabbers. Oh, there he goes. Got him? Yep. All right, cool. The shallow nets are definitely doing better. I think it's a combination of them being out of the current and them being on the bottom. All right, Frank, let's... I'm gonna grow up kind of quick. Oh, they're not liking the chicken, Frank. Nah, Tur turkey necks work yeah. way better than chicken. You did but... call it though. You said yeah. you wanted turkey necks. All right, let's see. Uh, this should be a fish, right? Yes. Lots of crabs, all little ones. All I'm gonna do is throw that back out. We're not eating those fish. <laughs> Chicken might be too fresh. Ooh. Woo! A number one on the chicken, baby. <laughs> a number one crab. Look at the leeches on all of them. Yeah. Beautiful number one, man. Cause... Try to shake it. There it goes. <laughs> all right. Hey, man. Yeah. We're making a pot. We're making a pot. All right, so here's, we're back to number one. So this is now number two. We wound up setting one here. So number one was here, but we moved them away from that deep part over here to the shallow. So we just set that one. Let's go ahead and check number one again. And we'll know from the check in the first few if we need to give it some more time as well. But I mean, hell, they were in here pretty quick. So let's hope. Cool. All right, two more. What a pot. Two more for the pot. So basically they haven't been setting very long, um, but we were catching so many, I was like, hey, let's go ahead and, and check them. But I think we're gonna have to let them set a little while. So bring a chair, bring a chair, 
bring something to snack on, bring a cooler, maybe in a few cold beverages. Take your time, plan a day when you do this. I can't remember if we, yeah, we had some decent ones in this one last time. Not a bad one, not a bad one. See if we get it in before he falls out. <laughs> Where's those? In my back pocket. All right. Not bad. All right, let's see if it's good luck about it behind this boat. Feels heavy. Oh, oh man. Yeah. So if you remember, this is that one that we had that other big number one. Yeah, Lee, we found us a little hot spot <laughs> here, Frank, behind that boat. We may have to set another one. I say we shift one over here, Frank. We're catching yeah. so good. This is part of the pier, y'all. Um, we just don't want to interfere with that boat, but the pier goes all the way there to that. So this is where those boats come in at. So this is where the public pier ends, but those boats come in right here, and that's where that big machine comes in to get them. So we probably need to put some nets over here. Something, Something's hot right there that they like. Dude, we caught a monster, y'all. We caught a monster. Where is he? That's him right there. Golly. That's the crab there. You don't stick your finger in his pictures. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's the one that hurts. All right, well, let's shift some nets. So we're catching good over here. All right, so we're going to make another round here. So this is a net that we moved from the deep water. Brought it to the real shallow. I mean, we're almost touching the bank here. But maybe that's the ticket. It doesn't feel very heavy. Yeah, is that a keeper or not? Nah, he's a little small. Okay, let's just throw it back in. Let him eat a little bit. Oh, they got one that's decent. Yeah, I see one in Oop. there. We'll get him out. That'd be a good one to save for bait. All right, so we caught one. Not bad, not bad. Crab, they all small. I don't think any one of them's a keeper. Maybe this one, huh? No. It's a female. Yeah, we'll put up those all back. No. That they look like they're all females, huh? Yeah. This has been the catching trap, the catching net. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what? You must have just caught a pocket. <laughs> I know, huh? A pocket on that came through. Just... Oh, yeah, we got crabs. We got crabs. It's a keeper. It's a little keeper there. Okay. All right, y'all. So we've been here about two hours from the time we pulled up, set out nets, uh, made our first few runs. Still early in the day. Like I said, plan on doing this all day when you come, though. You know, I doubt you're gonna. You know, especially if you bring a family of four, a little bit more than that. I doubt you're gonna catch enough for what you need in just a couple hours. So definitely set aside a day. If you're coming from out of town, look on the website I'm gonna provide. We've got all the resources you would need to find a place to stay. We've already shown you where to get the crab nets. We're gonna show you where to go eat them. So stay tuned for that. Stick around for that. Cause we got something special planned on the eating side of these crabs. Got a nice little pile of crabs. We're keeping them in the shade here, that's something you want to do. Ooh, this one feels heavy. Yep, Ooh. a lot of crabs on the corner. That's That was a good net there, y'all. Yep, let's see. Ooh, a nice crab. Nice size crab. All right, buddy. Maybe it's time to move a net down. Get a net right here. All right, we'll try right here. Still shallow enough. And we just caught a good one right there. So, it's a shrimp trawl boat right there. He's been 
kind of just holding right into the current. The current's running this way, and he's just kind of holding that boat. Now he's lifting up a little bit. I think he's pulling up all the way. So that's a few hours worth of crabbing, y'all. Got some weight. Got some weight, a nice big crab in it. It's a big one. That's a big one. Yes, sir. I like it. That could be good, Frank. That could be good. I'm not feeling weight, though. <laughs> I'm not feeling they got weight. one in there. Oh, nice a good one. one. Good crab. <laughs> Alright, so in that sense it paid off. You're gonna get bit. <laughs> I'm just grabbing. Alright. Alright y'all, so we've been out here for about three hours. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I'm gonna tell y'all something. We're doing something a little special. We're not gonna cook these crabs. My buddy Chad over at Charlie's restaurant has some soft shell crabs he's gonna cook up for y'all. So you go ahead and boil these, then go eat soft shells at Chad's when you come down here to St. Bernard Parish. Alright, we'll see y'all in the kitchen. All right, y'all, I'm here at Charlie's Restaurant down in Violet, which is a part of St. Bernard Parish. So if you come down here to do your crabbing trip like we just showed you, you go ahead and cook your own crabs, or you can come see how Chad does it and really learn from one of the best. I mean, this place here is one of the mainstays in St. Bernard, and when you come, you have to come visit. Chad, what are we cooking today? We're making a crazy crab dish that we started in the early 90s, and it hasn't left since. We're going to be cooking a crazy crab dish we invented back in the 90s. And it's one of our staples here it's at Charlie's Restaurant in Violet. Y'all, let's get it done. Yes, sir. We're cooking a soft shell crab. First thing we do is clean it. We got to pull off this, cut off its face. We don't need its face no more. Get rid of the uh, dead men. All right, first thing we do is dredge it in a special blend of flowers, very lightly, just a little bit. Get a little bit underneath the scales, just a little. Shake it off real good. And we put it in our egg wash. Give it a little second to, uh, to absorb some. Shake off all the excess. And put it right back in here. Dust it off good. Put a little bit on this gills. You want to hold the blades and hang them down like this. Set them in the fryer. You want to set them in there for about 10, 12 seconds, and then you just let it go. Oh, here's one. Oh, yeah, 350 degree, and we use a, uh, a peanut blend oil. All right, so you let it cook for another about two minutes, and then you pick them up and let them drip, let them drain off. Another component in this dish is our uh, pineate eggplant cubes. And we're gonna cube it up. We're gonna batter and fry it. Put in our white flour. You gotta make sure that stuff soaks a little bit so it gets soaked in there. And into Italian bread crumbs. We use a high quality breadcrumb. It is one of my favorites. Right. Drop it in the fryer, we're gonna fry for about two, three minutes. Oil in and up the fryer, y'all. Uh, crawfish sauce that we've been making since well, it's almost 30 years now. We got a nice angel hair pot that we bought. Put that in the middle and we don't have we don't have no plate portions here, we just grab and go. We put a little sauce on that. Sauce shell crab up. Put another little bit of sauce on this top. Oh my God. Oh and we hit it with this pine eight egg plant. And we let it fall all around the plate. Oh. A little fresh green onion. So this is our crazy crab dish, that one of our famous dishes here at Charlie's Restaurant in Violet in St. Bernard, Paris, God's country. Y'all come down here and check us out. 
and get your grub on. All right, well, if that doesn't convince you to come down here and visit St. Bernard, I don't know what else we can do. We showed y'all how to catch the crabs. We showed y'all where to come to eat the crabs. Now it's up to you to come down and visit St. Bernard. If you go look in the description down below this video, we've got all the links and all the resources you need listed there to come down and visit St. Bernard. We'll see y'all when you get here. Thank y'all. All right, bro. Let's get it. You said start with the claw oh, first? Oh, that's my favorite spot. All right, let's start with the claw first. Got to get some of that pasta. Get some pasta. Crawfish. Mm, mm, mm. Mouth watering, like my mouth is watering. That's so good. I haven't, had, I haven't actually ate this in a while. Ah. Mm. That's ridiculous, dude. <laughs> All right, y'all, we going crabbing. Today I'm heading on the boat actually with some family members. I'm with my Uncle Kirk, who runs the boat. I'm with Uncle Whippy, who's his father and my great uncle. And believe it or not, I'm standing right next to the lot that our family grew up on right here. And we'll explain a little bit of that later. So this place has a lot of history for me and my family, as well as the guys that y'all are gonna see on the boat today. So what we're doing today, we're gonna go set out some traps in some new areas. You know, this time of year, crabs kind of, they, they're not biting real great. So we got to test different areas and figure out where they are. So let's go get on the boat and get to work. What you got? I'm on in tuxedo. <laughs> got to be well-dressed and be in this trade. And got to have the white boots, right? I mean, that's... Trademark. Got <laughs> they got a commotion now, did you see that? The white boots? Yeah, the, there's a commercial where they show different things that you do, and the guy just shows his legs with the white boots and the crab trap. Are you crabbing? You know, <laughs> and whoop. <laughs> Some bait. Which I like to use for bait. Graham crackers and <laughs> chorizitos. Graham crackers and chorizitos. Nice. Yeah, no sauce. Y'all spoil y'all crabs, huh? <laughs> yeah. Come here, sweet lips. How y'all doing? Look at those precious little babies right here. Yo le he por Santi y por a las dos de la mañana y había un sisonte que me cantaba me decía que era ñoña que le quitaba la color de la manzana los dientes de la culebra y hacía medicina que curaba putting out crab traps in hopes that we have a bountiful catch what'd you like about this area that uh, when I was fishing with a rod and reel, I caught big, big crabs like this, like that. See, that's how big they were. <laughs> they were just like that. And these are brand new traps, huh? Brand new. Brand new. All right, so he's got some brand new traps. The idea is that you want to get them out and let them sit for about two weeks just to get the new smell off of them. That's okay, just one more thing uh, that could stop a crab from going in it. So he's getting the these new traps out, testing this area too. You ready? Go ahead. Trap away. This is custom corks, y'all check him out. And that's it. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus right. Christ. It's all a blessing. Yeah, we used to uh, I used to troll my dad when I was a young kid, you know, I was on a boat when I was eight years old, nine years old. And we used to trawl up in these different bias. They call all this whole area uh, at Delacro, we call it the Rivera. And, you know, everybody spoke Spanish, you know, they, 
todo esto área aquí lo llamamos la, la ribera en uh, ribera is you know like the whole area with all the bayous and lakes and everything else and, uh, they got different names for the lake but anyway the whole area is called a ribera all right so one thing y'all are going to hear a lot today is that things used to be Spanish here. And I know Louisiana is well known for its French and Cajun culture. What's probably a lot less known is the fact that we had a very similar culture, but people from Spain, specifically the Canary Islands of Spain. So leave us a comment down below. Let us know if y'all have heard of that before or not. Let us know if that's something y'all wanna hear more about. That's our family heritage, the Islano Spanish from the Canary Islands that live here at Delacro. Very similar culture to Cajun, but it had some of the things that made it unique too. All right, slow down a little bit there. All right, I'll get flagging you. Yeah. Explain to us what you say there and what that means. What, Ave? Yeah, and why you do it. Well, it means hold on to you. Yeah, oh, just hold on. Abe. And dale máquina. Dale máquina. Dale. Dale máquina. Give it motor. That's what that's in, in English. So it's more or less give it speed, you know? All right, let's do it. Abe. Abe. Dale máquina. Sometimes when the crabs are really biting, when you pull up a trap like that, how many do you see in it? If, considering nowadays, if you've got 20, 30 crabs up in there, that's a lot. Wow. So, I mean, uh, So that's what you like to see, pull up a trap, <laughs> 20, 30. <laughs> I would like to see that, sure. <laughs> Why did you throw that one back? Because it was a, uh, what they maiden call crab. Maiden crab. What does that mean? That means that it's, it's a female and then it's going to uh, grow some more, so we just throw them back. That's, in other words, that gives you the future for your crab, you know. You take all the females, well, if they're the ones that they are the producers. All right, so what we got here is an ice slurry, and what happens is the trap comes up and you dump all the crabs in there. And the reason for doing that, honestly, is to shock them, get them to calm down. So if you're trying to handle live, like, crabs fresh out the trap, there's a good chance you get bit, and guess what? When you get bit, that messes up the whole day. You got to patch up the wound, then you got to worry about infection. So it's just much better to go ahead and get them in this stuff, get them in the shock, and then sort them. They don't die, and then they come back after that, but... That's a much uh, more efficient way to do it. This is the measurement here. Oh, okay. Point to point. So what are you measuring there? That's five and a half inches. This is a size crab you could keep, but since it's a maiden crab and it's not getting ready to shed, I threw it back. Okay. Now these here, these other ones that you've seen, they look like maiden crabs, and this is a female. Uh, this one, see how it's kind of green right here? Kind of pink a little bit, and it's starting to get a claw? Mm -hmm. Well, then there's going to shed, and then about another... Uh, maybe a week 
So I keep them and put them in a little box till they shed and make soft bread. All right, so crabs actually shed similar to like a snake or any other shedding type animal. So it's gonna lose its shell and then start to grow a new one. And that process all happens at once. But what is a delicacy down here in Louisiana is to eat it at the point where the shell is still soft. So you can eat it shell and all, and we call that a soft shell crab. But in order to do that, you gotta catch it at that right time, which they're calling a buster. So a buster is a crab that's fixing to turn into a soft shell. So he's gonna set it aside, and then when it does become a soft shell, that's when you eat it. We got lunch. Is there, can you show them how soft it is? It's very soft, look. Wow. Those, those other ones were, were hard, it's very, very soft. And you just clean that up a little bit and eat it whole, huh? Yes, sir. Shell and all. You take the, uh, all you do is take the lungs out, take the lungs out, and you cut the mountain that off. And that's it. The rest of it, you just, uh, I normally fry them with a little olive oil and garlic butter, and fry, put them in a the frying pan, fry them, and make me a sandwich with mayonnaise. Hey, that's good eating. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a buster right there. That's See? a buster right there. Right, let's take our time and explain that. Might be a gram. This one's already finished. I have the big flap. That's not gonna, it's gonna produce eggs later, but right now it's not. It just lives, that's it. But once it produces the eggs, the, its production life is over with. So, sell them. This is a male, okay, five so and a, a half. Okay, male because this, this is, this is, is a male, more. right. Because this is the little narrow thing right here. Right, okay. That's a male. Okay. Uh, this is the female. Okay. And it's what they call a buster. I think because it's ready to bust out. Not quite, but it is. I'm gonna put him in a different box. Uh, yeah. And that's a number one fat uh, crab. All right, we got a few to eat. That's all we came to do. So let's head on back to the house and get cooking. All right, we back at Uncle Wimpy's house now. I know y'all know that sound. That means something's fixing to get boiled and it's gonna be these crabs. What a beautiful day spending time with family. We're gonna cook, show y'all how we boil crabs. Have a good time. Well, we got some crab boil with all the... <coughs> <laughs> all the seasons. All right, now in other parts of the country, y'all use sinus medication here in the spring. You know, the springtime's when the pollen's out, but this is our sinus medication right here. That's gonna clear us out. We'll be blowing our nose the whole time we eating this stuff. Woo, feeling better already. You put them in when the water's, when the water's cold, they swim around in the jacuzzi right there, and they get all the essence of what we just put in there inside of them because they take it in. If you put them in hot, They'll throw their claws and they won't season as good. You won't have to soak them as long. Y'all done. What's your name? Ain't saying too much right now, but boy, they nice. <laughs> I can name them as I take them out. <laughs> this is Leroy. <laughs> that's 
That's Stanley. <laughs> And Shelly right here. Look at Shelly. Look at Shelly. Look at Shelly. Shelly with the chef. Shelly. Tasty Shelly, too. The garlic guaranteed to get you a date tonight. <laughs> <laughs> with the right one. Woo! So what you doing there? Just taking the lungs out. You don't need that. I eat this. Most people don't. What was it? That's all the innards. <laughs> All right, what part is that? Mm. The best part, that's the lump meat. That's the best part of the crab. A big chunk, you know, nice big chunk. I bet people think you eat crabs all the time just because you catch them, huh? Yep, they sure do. Is that true? That's true. Oh, you do eat crabs all the time. All the time. <laughs> What's that? That's the lump. It's gone now. <laughs> I know y'all feeling sorry for me. I know. I mean, all this eating and hunting and fishing just weighing me down. I, I don't know how I do it. I don't know. I know. I know y'all are feeling it for me. I know. I know. Do me a favor. Click the like button. Because I, I need some support here. All this stuff I got to do. All this work I got to do to make outside the levees. Eating these crabs. Going out on the crab boat. It's tough. It's a tough life. All right. Well, y'all saw where they came from. Y'all saw how we boiled them. Now it's time to enjoy them. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button. Leave us a comment. We want to know. Did you like this? What else do you want to know about crabbing? Because we'll do some more crabbing videos too. All right, we'll see y'all soon. Hey, Luke, say hi to the video. Hi. Over uh, there. And them beautiful shrimp. Hey, the good news is if we don't catch no fish, we got shrimp to eat. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we rode around looking for redfish. We rode around a lot, like covered a lot, a lot of water, a lot of grassy ponds. Just didn't see any redfish. So I saw this little weir here, and we stopped at it, and we're catching we caught a catfish. We're getting some bites. We're gonna hang out. We got the cool dudes on the trip. All cool dudes on today's trip. Me and Jack got our brand new Outside the Levee shirts on. Bullfrogs are croaking in the background. We're gonna have a good time. Real Jack, real Jack. Get him, Jack. Get him, Jack. Get him, Jack. <laughs> Jack's got him, boy. Get him, Jack. Get him, Jack. Hold your right off, Jack. Oh, he came off. Oh, Dang it! Oh my God! Good job, Jack. Oh, he got one. Good try. And Luke, what you he got, got Luke? He what got you got a big old crab, Luke. You got a big old oh, crab. All right, one. stop, 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 stop. Let JJ see it. Yeah. I right, just lift it up now. Oh, oh, watch out, he's coming yes. in. Watch out, y'all. I got it. Luke got a big old crab. I got a crab. He's all Look tangled up too. Here, Look Jack. Oh, Jack, you got something on too. Start reeling, Jack. Start reeling, Jack. Jack, you got a crab too. Yeah. Wait, real Jack, that? real Jack, real Jack, real Jack. What's the crab doing? Jack is still on her neck. It's hard. Jack, I think you got a crab too. It came too. off, Jack. They're tricking us, Jack. All right, all right, Jack, hold your there. Let me deal with this crab. It's a crab. All right, Luke, let's check out your crab. Let's see this crab that you got. Luke! You got him a nice crab, boy. Let's see your yeah. crab, Luke. He's all tangled up, too. Look at him. Where's his crab? Oh, he got a, he got a stick. My crab got a stick. All right, let's put him on the ice. Let's uh, see him. My, my, my crab caught a stick. Oh, you actually got him hooked, Luke. He's dropping right. him in. There he goes. Go, go calm yes. down in that ice, boy. All right, we need some shrimp. We need he's, a shrimp. He's trying to all right. Shrimp. Jack, Is we got to set the hook for you, man. We're getting steady bites. <laughs> Crabs and catfish, I guess. And, uh, you know, Jack don't know how to set the hook yet. So he's kind of just reeling. I mean, I got a treble hook on, so let's hope they kind of hook themselves so Jack can catch a fish. If not, I might have to set the hook for him or at least teach him how to set the hook. Hold it up high, Jack. Hold it up high, Jack. Hold it up high, Jack. Somebody help me. <laughs> they caught a crab, a crab fish. All right, Jack, don't reel it no more. Hold on. Don't reel it no more, Jack. Right. Oh, it broke off. Dang it. Oh, I got it off. That's all right. Let's 
That's okay. That's all right. Jack, That's all right. We'll get another one. Fish. We'll get we another one. Catch two That's all right. We'll get another one. What Will, you got, Luke? Look at this. Watch out, Jack. If he's got a crab, he's got another crab. Watch I gotta out. help him get it in. Watch out, Jack. Back up. Back up. Let me see, Luke. Give me your rod. Give me your rod. Here, Jack. Jack, Jack. All right, Luke. Stop. 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 Lift him in. All right, let him down. Let him. Oh, Luke. Oh, I still have a bait. Okay, Luke. Next time, you gotta get him up and put him in that little hole in front okay. of you. Look, Luke. Look, Luke. Whoa. Put him in there next time, okay? What? In that little hole right there. Luke, good. Set him down now. Set him down. Wait. No, 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 no. Don't put him back in the water. Set him in the boat. Set him in the boat. Oh, good try, Luke. Good try. He might I didn't want to. I need help. Bro. I'm trying to let you learn how to do it by yourself, man. Yo, Get him, Jack. I caught something. Yep. Comes with the bag. Jack. Oh, it's a, it's a catfish. It's Get definitely a catfish. It's a crab. I try to lift him up and get him in the boat. Oh, he come off. He fell out. All right. Throw it. All right, I think I got one, guys. Let's see. Here he comes. Here he comes. It's a crab. It's open. It's open. <laughs> yeah, we got the baby. So now we found us a little spot where we're catching crabs on a rod and reel. Almost every cast. There's three nets, Jack. We can all use it. Oh, oh, that's a fish. That's a fish, boys. I got a fish. Right. All right, Jack, stay on me. Stay on and me, Jack. That's a fish, boys. That is a fish. That's a, that's a big fish. Got him. Come on, get him. Get him. No. Gotta get the pickle. Woo! That's right, a big catfish. Oh! oh. Right into the ice chest. How about that, boys? We're catching catfish and crabs. That is one of them. Good I'm thing we came back to this spot, huh? I'm Good thing we came to a new nothing. spot. We use a whole shrimp this time, Jack. Let's see. We're gonna hook down into the head, all the way to the bottom of the tail. Come out the tail, just like that. Old shrimpy shrimp. You can never go wrong fishing with shrimp. You are gonna catch something. Might not be exactly, oh, sorry, Jack. <laughs> Might not be exactly what you want, but you're gonna catch something. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a crab right there, boys. So we rode around a lot today, didn't see Really a lot of good water, a lot of dirty water. No redfish. We didn't see any redfish. But pretty day. We're kicking off our summer. Jack and Luke just got out of school. Huh. And they are loving their time on the boat today. So we stopped at one last little spot and we're catching some catfish and some crabs on shrimp. There it is. There's the spot. Right there. In the crab, Luke. See? Got one. <laughs> it's okay, Luke. A little crab. Bye bye, Coop. Come on. Get him, Luke. Get him, Luke. Get him in, Luke. All right. Watch out, Jack. Watch out. And put it in the ice chest, Luke. Oh, almost, Luke. It's, it's all right. We'll it's get him. No, we still got it. It's okay. Still we'll got him. it. Still we'll got it. All right, Jack. Let him put his rod back out. Luke. Oh, Luke, I got one. Him. I got a big fish. Jack, 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 Jack. Crab. Hold that. I got a fish. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Watch out, Jack. Man. Watch out. Oh, he came off. Okay. Jack, nice. Back to him by yourself, Luke. Sorry. Hey. Hold on, let and me help you out. Here, Jack, hold it. this for me. Did it. Hold hey. on, you got to stick it in. Let me see. Yep, he did do it. All right, show him how you did it, Luke. Hey, <laughs> hey, Luke, boy. Now yeah. I'm going to catch something. All right, get you, get you something, man. Get him. All right, I had an old bash fishing jig on the boat. So it's actually got a nice brush guard. Might keep me from getting hung up in any of them rocks. Since my slow roll was working so well, I'm going to go ahead and slow roll some shrimp. The good thing about using a bass fishing jig is you get that little keeper. <laughs> that shrimp ain't coming off now. Catfish and crabs, here I come. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
got me a cray. Another cray. Wow, wow, wow. Let me see him. There he is. Got me a cray. I knew that was gonna work. I got some. I think it's a. I don't know. Crab. Yep. Nice little crab, boy. Finally got a nice one. All right, we got a nice one now. <laughs> That's a nice crab. Jack, All right, show them what's on wait. your shirt. Yeah, I remember. Jack, Jack, Cowfish and alligator. And what's the alligator doing? Playing a guitar. Yeah, and what is the uh, catfish doing? Dancing. <laughs> He's got some sunglasses on. Is this a good shirt for kids? Yeah. Would you like some other kids to buy this shirt? Yeah. Got a fish, got a fish, got a fish, got a fish. Got it. All right, pick up the camera, pick up the camera. All right, you ready? I'm gonna put yeah. him in. Got him, got him. It's a catfish, catfish. Got it. Dang, look how gold that fish is. Oh, we told him. Fish we, is like golden. Yeah, we told him we want that one. Wow, look how gold. That's crazy looking. Yeah. Wow. That's a gold. Okay, put him on that side. A gold catfish, boy. Mm -hmm. Guys, they call fishes. Uh, we call, I don't know if y'all can see, but this fish is like, it's like golden. It's beautiful. Golden color catfish. Guys, look how far this is. Look at that. Pretty little cat. It's, no, it's a golden catfish. It's a catfish. All right, y'all, well, that was a good little mess of catfish and crabs. Got them all cleaned up. Now it's time to get cooking. And we're going to make a fried catfish sandwich with a little special sauce. You know what I mean. And then we're going to grill some crabs. So first, let's fry our fish. And by the way, the shirt I'm wearing, this is an Outside the Levees original. You can get it on my merch site. That's the shoe pick, the bowfin, the mudfish, whatever you like to call them. But if y'all remember the video we did with Trey Landry, that's where he comes from. All right, let's get to it. All right, so I got my beautiful catfish fillets. Look at that boy. I cut them into this size. So basically I took a whole filet and cut them in half. And I'll show you later why I wanted it that exact size. But we're gonna go ahead and lay these catfish into the egg wash, which was three eggs, about a half a cup of mustard, half a cup of blue plate mayonnaise, a little bit of beer. You stir it up and that's what you get. Let them sit in that a little bit. We get them out the egg wash and into the fry. I'm using the Zatarans Crispy Southern today. All right, and let's get it frying. Cool, that's what you want right there. As soon as you put it in, you want it going. And I'm just gonna do three pieces at a time. I don't wanna overwhelm my oil. All right, got all my fish done. Yes, sir. Old Catfish Johnson, boy. Catfish Johnson gonna be eating good. All right, now it's time to start on my crabs. I took a stick of butter, that's a tablespoon of garlic and a teaspoon of salt that's going in the microwave for one minute. All right, that's what your butter looks like once you get it melted. Once it is, go ahead and hit it with about a half cup of orange juice. Once you get all your crabs on, start hitting it with your sauce. Grilling stuff. Fill it up good. Go ahead and turn your heat down. Alright, so for this, you don't want to cook them too hot and you don't want to cook them too long. I check them every two to three minutes. As soon as it looks like they're done, go ahead and get them off. Alright, now I'm right towards the end. We'll go ahead and add just a little bit more of our sauce in there. We're going to keep these plenty moist. If they lose moisture, you're cooking them too hot. 
Okay, so keep it fairly low. Like I said, just keep a close eye on them. You could overdo these real fast. Crabs are done. I've had them on there probably about 15 minutes total at a low heat, checking often. You want to get them off and let them start cooling down. Remember, they're still cooking as they cool. Alright, now finally we're going to make our sauce for the catfish sandwich. We want to go with about a half a cup of chicken stock and let that come up to a simmer. Alright, we got that stock up to a little bit of a boil here. And we're going to add in a third of a container of cream cheese and just start rolling that around. It'll break down, just give it some time. Keep stirring, it'll break down. Keep on stirring. Okay, go ahead and whisk it. Whisk it good. Get it turned into a nice little cream. Once you get it all broke up, go ahead and add a couple scoops of pimento cheese. I'm just using the store-bought pimento cheese. Get the stir in that and get it broke up too. Don't want it to run off your sandwich too bad, so the thicker consistency the better. That should do it right there. Alright, now go ahead and drop in about a half a bag of spinach. It's gonna cook down, don't worry. It gets a little too thick, just go ahead and add a little bit more chicken stock. Just take it slow, get it how you want it. That should be it right there. We're just going to cook that spinach down now. Alright, once your sauce is done, put your catfish on the bun. Go ahead and get brioche for this. This is the only thing I wouldn't deviate on. You can make the rest yours, but please use a brioche. Get you some of that sauce. Put it on that catfish like that, boy. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. Get you a couple catfish, a couple crabs. Get in on some of that. That's heavenly. That beautiful crab meat there. Mm. Mm -mm. Delicious. All right, well, if that's not enough to get you to subscribe, I give up. Go ahead and do it now. Click subscribe, click the like button for the video, click the bell down below so you know when we put out new ones and we'll see y'all soon. Alright y'all, we crabbing. We got some special bait I've been saving for a few days. We're going to try redfish, but we're also going to try some frogs. You know, the other half of my frog, I cut the legs off and cook the legs, Well, I'll save the other half for crab bait. So we're going to see who catches better, the redfish or the frogs. I've been using my arctic ice. I don't know if y'all ever seen this before, but these ice panels are super handy. Just throw I them in the freezer. They're before. reusable. I thought of We use them all the time, especially in the summer. Looks like there's a trap already out. Watch out, Milo. Back up. Oh, yeah. Some nice big, nice crabs. See them? Definitely one, what one nice big? number one crab. What is big? Hmm? One is big and strong. Let's put frogs in this one, huh? Frog so look, we saved the half of these frogs. Frog Try petty. beating this crab trap with frogs. Frog well, little frogs are my friend. Little frogs are your friend? Yeah. Okay. that one go. Get our nasty bag again. That's an old redfish head. Watch out Milo. You gotta stay out my way, okay? 
that old nasty redfish head in there. Let's see if we can get this in there too. I don't think that's gonna fit too. You can just steal some bark. There it goes. It's in there. We're good. Let's see. This one. I like it. Alright. Alright, we got some beef melt that I had from crawfish season in here. And we're gonna cut up chunks of this beef melt to drop down there and catch them on a the string. Oh yeah, that's the kind of nasty stuff crabs like. Right there. That looks like brain. It looks like brain, that's right. Yeah. Try to get y'all a nice piece. Oh yeah. There we go, that's a piece for Jack. All right, that's it guys. Yeah. All right, that's all we're doing. We got some beef melt tied to a string. The boys are gonna drop it down. I got a net. When they pull a crab up, I'm gonna net it and put it in I'm the bucket. I wanna do mine, I wanna do mine. All right, come on. I wanna do mine first. Is that my mine off the thing? Yeah, daddy's holding uh, yours. Stay in the shade, okay? It's, it's... Let's see if we got a crab on. No, no crab. I knew it didn't come. All right, the beef melt is having a little bit of a hard time getting to the bottom. So we're actually going to rig up this little Carolina rig here. So this Carolina rig's got about a one ounce weight on it. So I just tied the longer string here and we can hope that sinks it down to the bottom better for us. Let's try that out. All right, the crabs were running here as of last week. So we're having some trouble getting to the bottom. But now I got a weight on, so let's go check and see. All I did here was I put my Carolina rig on to the string. Now I got some weight on and let's see if that helps us get to the bottom. All right, we got three hand lines out and three crab traps out. So we're gonna keep checking these hand lines and we'll probably leave the crab traps out for a few days. And we can make it more like this one if this one catches them. I don't feel nothing on this one. I don't feel anything. I, don't know. I wonder if they don't like that bait maybe. It's describing the whole life world. This is the frog trap here. I didn't know that was a frog trap. Nobody on me. Yep, we caught one in the frog trap. Yay! We caught two in the frog trap. Yay, Mom! All right, not too bad. Yeah. You're so, holding it right, hold it right. We caught two in the frog trap so far. We're gonna beat the mite. Uh, Alive. And they're kind of small, Jack. I wanna keep them. Why do you like them small crabs? Like? What is this perfect size, probably? All right. What are you letting them go for? I'm putting it back out. The crab traps seem to be outperforming the hand lines by a bunch, so we're going to set one more. I like experimenting. So far, the beef mount ain't doing worth a squat catching stuff. But hopefully, if we put it in a trap, it'll catch. Big one? You would think since this stuff is so bloody, it would catch great. I guess we're going to find out. All right. Here, hold it right there. Hold it right there. All right, let's get that nasty beef melt in there. Get that closed. Jack said he wants to kick it in. Yeah, you're get that hatchet out your way, Jack. All right, Jack, go ahead. Wait, wait, where's the web tied to? It's, it's tied off. So go I'm going to push it in. Yeah, go ahead. Careful with your hands. Good. I got something really exciting that's happening I need to talk to y'all about real quick. So I'm working with a company called Trover Trip and we're putting together a destination catch and cook trip. That's right. We're gonna go somewhere, somewhere around the United States, maybe even somewhere different in the world and we're gonna catch something and we're gonna cook it and we're gonna learn stuff. I'm so excited about this. So the company I'm working with, Trover Trip, this is what they do. They help content creators like me set up these destination trips we get people from our audience to sign up and we all go on a trip together. So they have a long, good track record of putting this together, having the right people in the right place, having the right itineraries, booking the right companies to do this with, and it's all set up. But what I need y'all to do is go fill out the survey for the Outside the Levees Catch and Cook Trover Trip experience. What the survey is going to do is help me pick the right place and the right activities for us to go do. 
So for instance, one of the things I'm looking at possibly doing is hosting a catch and cook trip to Maine to go catch lobsters, do some clams, and learn about how they do things up there. So this would work so where a group from our audience books the trip, we all go together, we go to Maine, we stay there a few days, we catch some lobsters, we catch some clams, we eat all the good food, I cook for y'all, and that's what we're trying to put together. But that's why I need y'all to go fill out the survey. They're gonna ask you where you wanna go, what time of year you wanna go, what your budget level is, what kind of activities you wanna do. And we need to learn those things first before we can officially set the trip. So I need as many of y'all as y'all can to go fill out the survey. Even if you're not able to eventually make the trip, by filling out the survey, you still help let us know how we need to formulate this trip and get it going. So go to the link in the description below. It's for Trover Trip slash Outside the Levees and fill out the survey for me if y'all can. That's really gonna help out big time. And I look forward to anyone who books this trip with me. We're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna cook for y'all and it's gonna be fun. All right, let's get into the video. All right, we gave them a few days and uh, I don't know, honestly, y'all. So remember, we did one with just frogs. Then we got one with just redfish and then one with just beef milk. We'll compare them all and see which one caught the best. Let's save the what I think is going to be the best one for last. Where is all this dirt coming from? Uh, the water, duh. The water, duh. Okay, I see at least one nice one. Wait, I'll see, I'll see. Hey, ah. hey Jared, I don't see anything anymore. You can just tap Wee! the back. Wee! What? Yeah. All right, nice. What happened? Nice, uh, what happened to the fish? Nice big number what? one. They wait, just ate it, wait. they eat it we'll up. We'll keep it that one. We'll keep it that one. All right, let me get my basket. Let's beat up. He's rusty. I don't know. I don't know what causes that, honestly. It looks beat up. All right, so there's one. So we need to land a man. Go ahead and leave this trap up because it don't have no bait. This is just beef milk. Let's see. Nothing. What? They already ate it all. Nothing on the just beef melt. That was wow. they already ate it all. I know, but they would still be in there. All right. Yeah, we only catch the one. Oh, that is the that's not down. Mine, that one, Jay. Huh? All right, we got a few in this one. Wait, that's good. Ooh, you hear no! me? I don't know why only that spot catches. Huh. That was the last ball. Why is that the only spot that catches? Wait, they have a little one. A little one, a little one. Yeah, I like, a little one. I like the little one. I like the little one. I like the little one. How many we got, Jack? Eight. Eight of them? Uh-huh. The frog frogs goes. only did the best, but for whatever reason, the spot is the I best, I mean, too. look at it. Yeah, boy. Time to get what? Okay. Jack just told me to remind y'all to get merch. He's thinking about us. Thank you, Jack. Where you going? All right, next I'm gonna put out some nets. These are just some old uh -huh. crab nets I've been having around for a uh -huh. while. Let's see if that hook still. All right, so all we're gonna do, take this little hook here and put some beef melt on it. Can I help? This beef melt is pretty, pretty good for like Sticking, you know, like sticking hooks through like that. We bait alligator lines with it. Yeah, I hope. All right, so there's net number two. Put that right there. All right, Jack, so let's go ahead and drop your hook. That was mine. Yeah, go ahead and drop that in. Go ahead, drop it down. There you go. Oh, it's perfect. Right, let that go down. Hi, y'all. Well, it is mid-June here in Louisiana. It is hot as can be. We're here at the middle part of the day. The good news is we can set our nets out, come get some air conditioning, and then go check them. But while I'm here, I'm gonna make sure to get me a little snack. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm snacking on. So this here, if you're not from Louisiana, maybe you've been here, maybe you haven't. Maybe you recognize this, maybe you don't. This is called hog's head cheese. And it's called that because traditionally it was made with meat from the hog's head. They would boil the skull and all that stuff would form a gelatin and this meat nowadays, I'm pretty sure they just do it with like shoulder parts and different scrap parts of the hog and they just use a gelatin. Well, people seem to be pretty divided on hog's head cheese. A lot of them think it's gross for me personally. It's one of my favorite snacks. 
Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. You like hogshead cheese or is it something you'd be open to trying if you haven't tried it before? So I'll just get me a nice little slice. Goes on the cracker just like that. Ooh, man, it's my favorite snack. Mmm. All right, man. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Be careful. What? It'll break up easy. All right, Jack wants to check the minnow trap. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. All right. We all see the minnows. It's full of minnows. Minnows! We catch minnows. Wow, Jack, you did good, man. She had pretty a good bite. You want to touch them? I want to touch them? Yeah, they go get a bucket, dude. You go get a bucket, dude. No, y'all the ones who are staying downstairs. We weren't. We might catch something. Alright, let's see. Wait, I didn't do that one. Check one of our nets. I didn't do it. Yeah. Hey! Hey, Mommy, Mommy, we catched one! Bring the basket over here. Alright. Alright, we got one. Here's your yo. baby, guys! Yeah, hold on. Let's get him out the net. There it goes. Alright, let the net back down. <laughs> So one of the good things about only catching a few crabs is you don't have to boil outside with the big propane burner. You can do it inside on the stove top. I might have to do two pots. I might not get them all in this one little pot. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a little experiment. Let's do this. I'm going to try steaming some. I'm going to try steaming some. We'll boil some and steal, steam some. So this will be the steaming pot. Since I just thought of this on the spot, the steaming versus boiling, obviously my steaming pot is not gonna be ideal. Ideally, you'd want something on the bottom there to set the crabs on. But so what I'm doing is just a small layer of water and then I'm gonna try to just pop a top on top of those crabs and let them steam. But I'm gonna season them the same way you would steam crabs and then we're gonna season the water like we would on boiled crabs. All right, so my boiler is coming up right now i want to go ahead and season it since jack is a kid he's going to be eating these with me i'm not going to overdo the spicy on it real easy just some cajun seasoning don't need to overdo it there because like i said jack is a kid we don't want to ruin it for him let's just do some salt Maybe we'll do a little bit more Cajun seasoning on Jack's. A little bit more. Okay. All right, so this is the boil in batch right here. All we did was a little bit of Cajun seasoning and salt. I'll show y'all what I'm working on over here. This will be the steamed batch here. So let me teach you. Look, you're gonna grab, look how big that one is. Ooh, that's a big old crab right there, yo. Oh, right. he's gonna hit me if I. Boom. Why do you put him upside down? Put him in. Why do you put him upside down? Why did you put him upside down? It doesn't matter what way you put him. Two. I like the form, not upside down. Alright, we're gonna let these come back to a bowl for a few minutes. Mm hmm. Not too bad. Let's see how our steam, little steam over here is looking. Almost ready to get in there in the steam. Alright, now my blue crabs, since they're rolling good, I only want to boil them about five minutes. Really don't need to do a long, long boil on here. Is that the one you, need you to can do tell ice? they're already cooked pretty good. Alright, let's check my little makeshift steamer here. Going pretty good, but I'm going to let some of that water cook out just so we get a little bit more of a traditional steam. And they'll still be sitting in the water if we do it like that. Uh -oh. All right, my crabs have been boiling probably, you know, five, six minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead and get them. I'm Jack's going to dump it, some okay? ice in them. Go ahead, Jack. Daddy, I'm going to feel it. it. Oh, baby, you got to dump the whole thing. Oh, Daddy, me do can it? I feel it? No one help. Wait, right here, help me. Watch your Daddy. fingers. Watch your fingers. Daddy. Daddy. All right, we got ice in it. I want them to cool down. Daddy. 
as really fast as possible. Fast as possible. Yep. Okay. All right, dump it all in. I'm dumping it in. Okay. Well, all right. Okay, get out of my spot. Some more ice in. Get out of my spot. No, we don't use no more ice now. That's different. I think that's good. So, I'm going to try what they do, which is just to put the seasoning on top of the crab. I don't know how that's going to come out, but we're trying it. I'm seeing it. Cover it up. Cover them up and let them steam. Alright, the bald ones have been soaking long enough. We're going to go ahead and get them out. So, our total soak time was probably 10 minutes, like I said. But we put two bowls of ice in there to really try to bring that temp down, stop the cooking of the crabs, and just let them soak to get some flavor. Ah, oh, that's a big old crab, Jack. Look at that. Wait, what's it? You know, just by some of the size of these crabs, I really wish they were running, which, you know, running means like they're in a particular area. Because some of these are really nice. All right, so there's our boiled ones. All right, y'all, my steamed ones should be done. That one's broke. And cut the heat on those. And pull those out. All right, so we've got our boiled ones. These are just boiled in the water with seasoning in the water. And then we've got our steamed ones here where the shell sat on the bottom. The water probably only came up to about right here, so it never covered the meat. And we just covered the crab and season. So we're gonna do a taste test and see which one we it's like the best. or better. Yeah, we might. You know, we also got our hogshead cheese here. My favorite is right. this. So I let's do. You want to start with a bold one? This one. Okay. A nice fat little crab, but it's fat little crab. I'm gonna add the little. All right, and we clean them up. Get the top off. Duh! Get the gills out, and then we <laughs> crack. And we start accessing the good meat right there. So I give it a little kind of crack like that. And boom. Where's mine? This is yours. Give me. Oh my goodness, y'all. Look at that. That is. Mm, mm, mm. You want to test it, make sure it's not too spicy? I want to test it. Okay. Oh so my just goodness. eat all of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just the white part. Just the white? Yeah, just the white part. Hmm. Not too spicy? Yep. All right, so this is the way I've eaten crabs my entire life, boiled. Typically with a little bit more seasoning, but Wait, as you... I mentioned, I didn't want to bomb Jack out. Hold on, Jack. Let's, let's try, now that we've tried the boiled one, let's try the steamed one. Our friends in Maryland wanted us to try this, okay? And I know we didn't do it 100% correct because we didn't have the right equipment. And uh, now we got it. We got the basic. All right, so steamed crab, I'm just gonna open the same way. I'm still gonna eat it though. It's full of seasoning. I think the idea here is to get it on your fingers as you're peeling the crab. So there's not gonna be a lot of seasoning down in there, but we're getting it on our fingers. What are you doing? I'm pretty sure that's the concept when you hey, steam a you crab. Doing? Versus the way we boil them here in Louisiana. Okay, give me it. Let's see. Okay, I want to test out first. Just Hold on, Jack, it's hot. Oh. I can tell you this, it is on my fingers. Yeah, I told you this, this points huh. you. Hey, how you turn it I can tell you one downside already to steaming. Those ones? Those white ones? They're harder to they peel. They only turn out at the night. You know, that ice we put in there stops them from cooking, makes them easier to peel. All right, so this is my first piece of steamed crab. Made sure I get some of the seasoning on there. I'm going to try it. Man, that's good. I'm going to try it. Okay, I'll get you. I've never you gonna try before. also? All right, here, Jack. I'm gonna get you some of the steamed crab. Mommy's gonna go. Yeah, that's good. You like the steamed crab? It's better. It's what? Nothing. You say it's better? It is. I'll tell you why I like the steamed crab a lot. That was the taste. Because the seasoning's fresh. Like, it's right what there. It's not you? like it's been Wait. sitting in the water and getting down in the Steve. crab. The seasoning, like, it's there. It is. And that's one of the... I guess that's why people like it because you actually it. you get more one. punch from the seasoning by doing it that way. And then I just eat the claw. One last time, I'm going to plug the merch. Go down below the video in the grid. Click any one of those items. That'll bring you to the merch store. Any merch purchase that you do helps support what I do. So I appreciate it.
If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, click the bell down below so you know when we put out more, and we'll see y'all soon. All right, y'all, I want to preface this whole thing by apologizing for everything you're about to see here today. Nothing about what you're going to see falls in line with a traditional fishing show. Case in point, these two fellas that are <laughs> fine representation of South Louisiana anglers, that's kind of what we're working with today, just to be perfectly honest, all right? I'm, I'm just putting it out there. My cousin's place, Joe's Landing in Barataria, Louisiana. This is an icon of the Barataria side, dude. This is the spot to be. Best Bloody Marys in Lafitte, probably the world. You want a Bloody Mary, dude? What kind of question is that? Three Bloody Marys. I mean, look, I'll be honest, there's not a lot of bait shops you can go and also get a Bloody Mary. I mean, let's be honest here, right? When did y'all open back up from Idaho? Uh, Mid-December. Yeah? Mid-December, yeah. So how long were y'all down for? Well, uh, so that was in August to the mid-December. The only things that were left in here were, that still was original, was them Cypress ball stools and them two tables, that's it. <laughs> Damn, that's good. Home of the Bayou Bloody Mary, how about that? All right, so one thing you'll see about my partner, Tophil Bourgeois, he wears a lot of freaking hats. He's a musician, he's a tattoo artist, he owns a fishing lodge. He could basically fix anything, and apparently he's into cypress tree logs. So he's got something here he wants to show us. I think it looks like a piece of crap, but he says it's like really nice and valuable. Let's see what he's got to say. See, I don't even understand how you can look at this and be like, because I look at this and I'm like, oh girl. Let me see what I could build out here, right? So it's sun bleached and it's all nasty and it's covered in mud and it's to, to most people, it's an obstruction, right? It's a, it's a hindrance to what they're trying to do. But to me, I'm gonna come back and I wanna get this log. This is just mud and sun bleached, right? So if you, you get a little chop, look at that. Like you mill that down, that's good wood. All these, these old holes, these worm holes, like this right here, this is so in other words what you're saying is if you really took the time you could make it make something out of that based on what you're seeing here oh i'll take this and i'll make you i'll make you a gun case out of this right here what oh, no yeah. way oh yeah i'll mill that thing down in my backyard drying in a kiln and i'll take it in the shop i'll make you whatever you want all right well i personally i'm not buying it <laughs> i want to see because like that i'm like dude get that out the way that's a bunch of trash Let's go see what he's got. All right, so if y'all wondering why I'm so obsessed with this lumber and, and what the potential can be, this piece here is, is kind of a, a testament to why this is. So my great uncle on, on my papa bourgeois side, so Tofield Jr. I'm the fourth. His brother built this cabinet. And this is all sink or cypress. And this, when, you, when I was talking about the wormholes on the side, this is the edge of a log here. And you can see this is where barnacles were. That, that's the little, the little calcification on the edge there. So he would put all these things together, but what he did was kind of cool. He would take a grinder, and you see these big slits he put in it? He'd give it even a little bit more charm. He'd get in there and give it a little bit more character. So in his house is right down this bayou and his whole house is sink or cypress lumber. Outside, inside, it's crazy. So I'm gonna show you guys the cabinet shop and I'm gonna show Jared why that log ain't trash. This is a beautiful wow. board right here. Holy, hold on, slow down. <laughs> what? And you just what? driving, you just driving past that. You driving past that like it's trash. Look at that. Wow. 
That's beautiful. No way. All right, ladies and gents, I stand corrected. So this here, what we saw out there in that swamp, this is what he can make out of it. It didn't look like much to me, but that's pretty. Move. All right, so I know y'all see us having fun cutting up, but unfortunately there really was a disaster here, which was Hurricane Ida. It flooded almost all of Lafitte, ruined livelihoods, ruined businesses, ruined houses, and a lot of things had to be rebuilt. Unfortunately, Toolfield's Fishing Lodge is not rebuilt yet. This place is flooded four times now. Before my dad passed away, it had flooded three times and he had already set the gears in motion on elevating this place. Coincidentally, that timeline fell right after Hurricane Ida. So on the heels of the greatest storm we've seen, we had four foot six of water in here. The storm hit August 29th. We were slated to start elevation in December. So we almost missed this storm. But on top of all that, we had to completely demo and gut this whole lodge. And once they finally started the lift, they had about four months of digging. They started the lift, the slab failed. It's a, it's a 120 year old building. And normally this place is bustling. You know, there's plenty of people in the community that make a living off of this place, not just us. It's like the families we feed, the guests that we share the Cajun experience with. You know, we kind of, we don't just sell fishing, man. We sell the lifestyle, we sell the experience. Like we want people to understand what's so beautiful about this place and why we love it and why we decide to, to bear our roots outside the levees, right? You know, so I mean, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a risk associated with that, but it's worth it. Storm surge like the town of Lafitte saw during Hurricane Ida will continue to get worse as we lose more and more wetlands along Louisiana's coastline. We're slowly starting to rebuild those wetlands, but without national support, many restoration projects could go unfunded. The coastal wetlands dampen the impact of storm surge and strong winds during hurricanes, so restoring these wetlands actually holds an economic value. The more wetlands we have, the less money has to be spent on hurricane recovery. To learn more, visit my friends at Vanishing Paradise. VanishingParadise.org All right, well, we didn't catch any fish, but we still have to eat. As I've mentioned on this show before, one of our favorite delicacies down here in Louisiana is a soft shell crab. Well, Tofil happens to have a buddy who produces, guess what? Soft shell crab. So we're gonna go check out his operation, see how he does it, and get a few, go head back to the house and get cooking. We are at Mr. Richard's crab, the soft, what's it, the bussing station? What you call it? Mr. Richard's soft crab. Mr. Richard's soft crabs. This is the coolest operation, I think, on the Barataria side. So when we, at the lodge, we always serve Mr. Richard's crabs, because I mean, you can't get no more fresh than this. When a crab first comes into Mr. Richard's shop, this is the first stage, and this is the tank that they go into first. Okay, this is a red line female. She's got a new little claw. If we ever figure out how to grow a new arm, we're gonna be millionaires. The crabs do it. In the leg is a red line. This red line, right where my little fingernail is, in 72 hours, this crab will be soft. Wow. 72 hours. That's the crabs I keep. I don't like crabs in my building for more than 72 hours. This is a female. This is a male. And he does not have a red line. The fisherman throw him in there. He's got a white line, which means it might take him 96 hours, five days to shed. Okay. Well, I don't pay. Now this has got a red line. I can see the red line right on my thumb. See that little red hook? Yeah. That crab will be soft in 72 hours. This is a buster, a peeler. Okay. And you can see the back side, the crab just about to come out the shell. That's the new soft crab inside. At this stage, this 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 crab cannot hurt you. I will put this crab on my ear to prove that he ain't hurt me. I have a crab earring, son. Uh, Every crab in this box here, and this box here should be soft by tomorrow morning. Okay, gotcha. These crabs are soft. That's the soft shell crab there, and the soft shell crab there. Okay. When the female gets this big apron, she will never be soft again. This is the uh, final take. I get up every two hours a night to take crabs out of the water, because in two hours, they'll start to turn what we call paper shell. The restaurants don't want them 
paper shell. It's chewy. This is a soft shell crab. It's the label of love. All right, so I don't know if you heard that right, but he wakes up every two hours throughout the night to come in here, check the tanks, and pull them out at just the right time. If you let them go for too long, the shell is not what the restaurant's desire. So if you're an insomniac, this might be a good job for you. All right, y'all, so we're gonna go ahead and make some soft shell crab po' boys with a delicious brown gravy. I'm gonna start with jar roux. The reason I'm not making a roux is because we've been filming all day, all right? So I don't wanna hear, oh, you know how to roux. Eh, you didn't make your roux. Save it, okay? I know how to make a roux. I don't have time to make a roux. That boy's lying! He's lying! I'm not, I'm I see not. you just burned a roux. Not. I burned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the thing about jar roux, you just let it set like that, it's not gonna do what you think it's gonna do. You do have to add some oil to it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. And we're just gonna try to get it going. It's gonna start breaking down over that heat now. All right, got that root broke down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a can of chicken stock. That's about half right there. All right, one can of chicken stock. Now I'm gonna start adding water. If you've ever had a roast beef po' boy, you're trying to get the consistency of that gravy there. All right, I'm gonna add one more water. All right, now I'm gonna turn that heat pretty, pretty low. Gator glitter, Cajun garlic, butter with a bite. I'm not gonna use too, too much. Hit some of that, some onion powder. Like I said, I'm not gonna crank my heat up on this. I'm just gonna kinda let it simmer while I'm getting them crabs ready. All right, so this is a soft shell crab, see? So, so you can't eat it just like this. There's just a couple things you gotta do. First is to remove the uh, eyes and mouth area. So you just kind of cut into it with a pair of scissors like that. He's trying to remove that part. It's really not a big deal. Okay, get that off, pull it off. Then you want to get the lungs. That's this part here. So to get to the lungs, I just fold that up just like that, okay? Pull that out. Okay, fold it back, and then he's got some more on the other side. Just fold it up, fold it back, and then the last thing to do is to turn it over and pull this piece here. That's the flat part here. It comes from the top of the shell, so you have to separate it from the top. Discard all of that, and now you're ready to eat. I know what you're thinking. There's no way they're gonna eat that. But watch how good it's gonna look when we lay it on that po' boy. All right, so I went ahead and dried off the crabs real good with a paper towel, I started seasoning. I'll put a little bit more of this old boy right here. Now he said it's with the bite, so something that pre-warned you with the bite, you probably don't wanna overdo it. Got a good bit of cayenne pepper in it, so I'm really just hitting it with a little bit. Some onion powder. Flip it back. Back to the onion powder. That's it, that's really all we're gonna do. Now I got my hot pan over here. Add a little bit of oil. All right, spread it around. Good, nice and hot, that's what we like. Before I drop them in that gravy. Oh, 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 oh. Did you hear me? Uh, na, 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 na. All right, y'all, we sauteed these for about 10 minutes. We didn't need to cook them all the way through, probably a little bit over 50%, but let's get them to that gravy. Go ahead and just drop them on in, let everybody get to know each other. Mm-hmm. Gravy, meat, crab. There he is. And we're just gonna let that cook now for probably about 10, 15 minutes. Don't need to cook it on too high, you just want that gravy to start seeping into the crab. Say, what's happening, crab? My name Gravy. That's it, right there, y'all. 
Alright uh, y'all, we sauteed for about 10 minutes, dropped it in the gravy for about another 10 minutes. Now if I had a lot of time, I'd let it just simmer in that gravy for a while. But since we're short on time, let's go ahead and get a good crab out of there. Oh, check him out, boy. Get him on that bread. You know we got to go with more gravy than that. I mean, ain't, we didn't make gravy for it to go to waste. There it is, y'all. Got to use your favorite mayonnaise. Ours is blue plate, as always. Get a good bit on there, don't be shy. Get you some lettuce. Don't be shy. Get you some maters. Don't be shy there either. All right, y'all, that is a soft shell crab in gravy pool boy out here on outside the levees. Shout out to Tofield. Thank you, brother, for showing me around Lafitte. I'll be back. It's a beautiful place. All right, y'all go check him out. He's not far from downtown New Orleans. What you about, Toe? 45 minutes? 30. 30 minutes from downtown New Orleans, so you got no excuse not to come see Toefield down here in Lafitte. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the video, click the like button, click the bell down below, and we'll see y'all soon. Let's get in this little poor boy now. Don't fry them. Do this with them. All right, folks, we're back in beautiful St. Bernard Parish, and I'm here at Fisherman's Friend Marina. We're going to hit the water and go try to catch us some crabs. This is a great place when you bring your own boat to come to St. Bernard to launch and to be able to access Bayou Bienvenue, Lake Bourne, and lots of amazing fishing territory. Like I said, my goal today is to catch enough crabs to eat. I've got some bait. I've got some nets. So let's get out there and see if we get on them. Good morning. Uh, Y'all remember Captain Randall? I got you on them crabs today, bro. Yeah, getting you, you like off of them redfish and getting you on them crabs. I'm ready for it. Wore my tennis shoes today. No flip flops <laughs> today. <laughs> folks like I said we're going for crabs today and I've got my nets these are 15 inch ring nets what you do is you drop them down in the water they go to the bottom this set here keeps it uh, keeps it flat on the bottom then you've got about 10 foot of line that comes up to a cork here and the cork is what'll set on top of the water, and that's what you use to remember where your nets are. And then you go by and pick it up and see if you got some crabs. So I got two different baits today. I got some chicken wings that sat in the fridge for just a little too long. And I got, actually, this is uh, from the rabbits that I cleaned last week. That's the spinal cord and the uh, part of the ribs and stuff. So it's, it's pretty similar to a dang turkey neck. I'm hoping that works out pretty good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bait them all and we'll set them all. folks we just set out eight of our crab nets uh you know this until you start catching it could just be a test run like so i'm gonna let those soak a minute go back check them if there's nothing i'll probably move on and find a better spot and ride around and you know find something that looks a little bit different from where i'm starting now the reason i picked this spot is it's a main bayou so hopefully this is you know an avenue for those crabs to kind of come in and out of the marsh as they want to get out into the lake but there's really no guarantees you kind of just have to start with whatever you know looks good to you now i do like to key in on uh probably four to two foot of water as the you know as you've seen me and captain randall do before these shallow flats start to warm up first in these winter days and it's not a particularly cold day 
So let's hope that the water temperatures are gonna come up enough for us to catch some crabs. All right, they've been setting for about 10 minutes. So let's go check net number one. If it's got crabs in it, we'll check all of them. If net number one and number two don't have crabs, we might wait a little bit. Day started finally. All right, come on, crab. Come on, crab. Come on, crab. Hey, crab. We need, we need the size to go up a little bit. We're getting little guys. All little guys so far. Oh yeah, we got a couple. We got a couple. All right, we're catching a few. I would like to see that size go up a little bit. There is no size limit uh, on recreational crabs, but I'd like to see that size go up a little bit. All right, let's try that. You gotta start counting the difference too, because I, I have a feeling that most of those came off of the rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we had any on the chicken. That ain't good. Yeah. Start but watching. hey, it's a beautiful day in St. Bernard. I'm telling you, you gotta come down here and do this. It's only gonna get warmer from here too though. Like today it's gonna be into the 70s. We have some really, really mild weather in the winter. Let's check, is this one we need to check? Uh, I don't think so, that one's Okay. Uh, yeah, we have really, really mild winters. Um, I mean, all I'm wearing today is a hoodie. If I wasn't on the boat, you wouldn't even need the hoodie. It's just the fact that, you know, you get a little wind out here. So come see us in St. Bernard. I think you'll enjoy it. One spot catching y'all, so everything's going here now. That's it. We just take it with what Mother Nature gives us. Oh yeah, big one. 
big one. Nice one. Heck yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about. That was a nice one. Right back out, Mr. Randall. Alright. Yeah. Throw that one right back out. Alright, folks. All right. Well look, I'll be honest, we're not crushing the crabs, we're not pulling up every net full of crabs, but we're having a good time. We're catching a little bit at a time. You pack a lunch, you come do this, bring the kids. I promise it's fun. You could also come with more nets. We came with eight. Now, if you came with 20 or 24, you'd have more to run, more to keep you busy. That's what we came for. This is blue crab. And we are fishing in Bayou Bienvenue. This is a brackish water bayou, a little bit of fresh, a little bit of salt water. Very productive for these blue crabs. bad at all right there i can tell you each one of those crabs if you go buy it boiled at the seafood store that's two dollars a crab right now and we've got about 24 in there nothing all right y'all well we were out here a couple hours beautiful weather in the 70s windy just super comfortable to be out here t-shirt and jeans type of weather come see us in St. Bernard now we got to go see how one of our wonderful St. Bernard restaurants cooks up these crabs all right folks I'm not gonna be cooking them crabs myself I'm actually heading over here to Prey restaurant in St. Bernard where they've got lots of blue crab and lots of creative dishes they can do with it this is one of those places you definitely want to visit when you come to St. Bernard. The creativity of food here is unmatched. It's really impressive. They do lots of cool things where they take our Louisiana style of food, but also mix it with other influences such as Asian foods. It's a really cool place. Let's go check them out and see what kind of ideas they got to do with that crab meat. I'm Ashley Corto. I'm here the chef at Grieve. We're in St. Bernard Parish and we love to feed the parish. And we have lots of seafood from all around. Today we're cooking the redfish criolla, blistered tomatoes, lump crab meat, green onion butter, the bronze redfish, seafood rice, and asparagus. The bronze and the redfish. For a profit, for a redfish criolla. We season our fish with our house-made blackening season. We got some cayenne pepper, some white pepper, some paprika, some salt, some garlic, some onion. We're gonna bluster these tomatoes to the top of our fish. A little grill with a little shine of liquid to the top. Right here, I have some green onion butter. I'm gonna place these tomatoes in. 
What's that there? That is our seafood rice. And what's in it? It has crawfish and shrimp inside. No way. This is our fresh jumbo crab meat. It's gonna go right here on top. Couple of those knuckles there. Mm. And some of this good sauce we got here. Oh my goodness. That's the tomatoes, green onion butter. Oh. A little lemon for you. And now it's all pretty. Ready to go. Alright, look at that. That is the bronzed redfish Creola here at Crave. They do some really creative things with our local seafood. On top of seafood rice, this rice has got shrimp and crawfish in it. I mean, come on, you gotta come try this place. Now, I gotta try it. Ooh. Some seafood rice. Nice piece of crawfish in it. Y'all, I, I think this is my favorite blackened seasoning I've ever had. It's that good. Very, very good. Now we gotta try some with some tomato. So typically when something is referred to as Creole, a dish, a lot of times it does have the tomato in it. Not always, but a lot of times. Mmm. So good. And this would be a great trip to come do when you visit St. Bernard. Go catch your crabs. You don't feel like cooking them right then and there. If you want to have them boiled, you can boil at wherever you're staying. You're staying at one of our lodges. Um, you could bring your camper. You know, we got lots of places to put a camper. Go catch you some crabs. Come eat at our restaurant. See how they cook crab. You know, that's how you learn different things. You go to a place where seafood is a big part of what they do and you learn different ways that they cook crab. So I hope we showed you some interesting things about St. Bernard, what to do when you come here, how to catch your crabs, where to come eat. If you want to learn more about St. Bernard, go ahead and subscribe because we got a lot more coming. And we'll see y'all soon.